Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and today is the day we've been waiting for for a while and that is the update. We now have the latest Honda, the latest Aprilia and the latest bikes within the MotoGP class. All riders have been updated and now feature the more prominent things we've seen from 2022. Now something I did read into, which I'm going to read into a little bit more later, is that the riders have also been adjusted in the sense of some face scans here and there. They have adjusted the sort of rider performance so a team won't be 100% when it shouldn't be, if that makes sense. But we'll look into that later on. But for now, I read a really concerning review just before I started playing this that the game has changed and it feels completely different. A bit similar to what happened to Ride 4 when the bikes all got changed in a random physics update. And so far, it does feel a bit dodgy, <laughs> to, to put it one way or another. This could be a simple placebo effect, maybe a fallen foul to reading someone's comment online, but oh, I don't know, this doesn't feel good at all. Uh, the bikes feel odd. Someone's coming up the inside, I better move out of the way. And I will confess, I did just try it a moment ago before starting this actual video, and I did find that the brakes are terrible. <laughs> the, the brakes have gone really, really backwards. Now, as I've said in, a, in the review and then a few times since then as well, I much preferred MotoGP21's braking over this, but this feels odd. It feels like I literally have no brakes whatsoever. Oh, yikes. This this feels odd. This, ah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I don't have enough fuel to finish this particular lap, so let me check out the face scans and rider performance indicators to see whether things have changed, and then we'll come back to this. So here we are now then guys, in the rider selection screen, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Fabio's face looks a little bit better, his Yamaha is now up to 2022, I don't know if you noticed, but Fabio's Yamaha for some reason didn't have the blue lines on it before the update, Franco Morbidelli looks good, yeah everything seems to be fine with that, Peko Banyaya, hey Peko looks pretty good actually, fair play, his beard looks a lot better now. Uh, Jack Miller looks okay, I guess, why not, uh, Suzuki's finally of course been updated as well. Got the nice black part on there at the front. Joan Mir's face scan looking pretty good. Latest helmet. Alex. Oh, Alex Rins. <laughs> Why is he staring at me like that? Jesus, Alex. <laughs> Goodness me. But yeah, Alex Rins up to date. Marquez. Eh, not looking too bad. Not looking too bad. Paul Spargo looks pretty good. Bit chunky, but he looks all right. Of course, the KTM is now up to date with the white outline for the Red Bull. Looks pretty good. Brad Binder fine. Uh, Miguel Oliveira, not too bad, but the Aprilias, Alicia Spargro and Maverick Vinales, of course, the latest Grand Prix winning Aprilia. Looks great. Really happy to see this in the game now. It's getting kind of bored after seeing that Aprilia for so long within MotoGP 21. And, of course, Maverick Vinales as well. Everyone's favourite rider. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Jorge Martin, Johan Zarco on the Pramit Ducati. Yes, looks good. And I should be mentioning the team performance so far, 100% for the Ducatis, 95% uh, for the Yamahas and Suzuki's, 90 for Honda. Yeah, maybe. Maybe an 85 would have been more applicable. KTM probably would have, say, 85. And that probably needs to be higher for the Aprilia. Or at least Alicia Spargroves needs to be higher, because he's doing a stellar job on that Aprilia. An 85 for the Pramac Ducati team. Jorge Martin having a bad season this year, but good to see it's all up to date now. actually really love this livery. Of course, we already know about Davizioso and uh, Darren Binder. Looking pretty good, actually, to be fair. No complaints with them. Team performance, 75%. Probably put it as less than that, but still. Taka Nakagami, of course, the really, really good-looking Honda livery. I actually really like this one. I think it's awesome. Uh, Alex Marquez, very similar to last year, but good to see the new Honda. Pretty good, not too bad. Marquez, face scan, not too bad. Yeah, this one's not changed. Uh, team performance, 70%. And Airbus is a two-time winner on that Ducati. You're playing with yourselves there, Miles. So come on, change that. <laughs> Fabio Di Antonio, of course. Yep, rookie in the class. And uh, whoa, Remy Gardner. Actually looking like Remy Gardner. Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, I'm impressed. Remy Gardner looks fantastic. Here's a screenshot of what he used to look like before the update. <laughs> God, that's hideous. But brilliantly done now. I'm happy with that. Raul Fernandez, yeah, looks pretty much the same as he did, which is fine. And of course, the star of the show, the Mooney VR46 bike. This is one I've been waiting for for a while, and it looks so good. Probably just massive bias here for being a Rossi fan, but I still think it looks great. And of course, Marco Bezzecchi, one of my personal favourite riders of all time. Yes, I'm happy with that. Good, looks good. 
Looks fine to me. Now, the 3D faces, some of them do look really good. Luca Marini's is quite noticeable. Pekumanyaya's beard looks high def now compared to the 720p I think we got last time. Well, whatever it was. But Remy Gardner. Hey, that looks good. <laughs> that looks good. So something I hated in the original build was how bad the other riders start off the line. Not bad. It... Oh, it is a bit similar, though. I mean, look how many positions we've gained. Come on, and I can't stop the bike. I really can't stop the bike. That's massive contact. Peko is in another part of the track there. He needs a ticket to get back into the circuit. Is this still 120% difficulty? I'm going to have to check. <laughs> oh. Okay, then, as a good test, I've come back to where my MotoGP 22 experience began, and that is Portimao with Andrea De Vizioso on the With You RNF Yamaha. So straight away, yes, the AI are weak. Really, really weak, way weaker than they were. As we now go around the outside of Miller, very slow into that Primera corner there, actually, there's been a crash behind. Sad to see that we still haven't got the updated names that have crashed. I really like to see. Whoa, Paul is... Oh, goodness me, that was Peco by the not Paul Spargo, my apologies. So, let's, get... let's talk physics. This is the most important part. I was not having a good time with Aprilia. This does feel okay, it does feel different. Okay. Have I crashed? Have I saved it? <laughs> oh, oh my god, what is that? I... I have no words. <laughs> okay, so ignoring that weird moment, <laughs> we'll get back to what we were discussing. So the physics then. Right. Important stuff. The brakes don't feel as good. The brakes feel like they've taken a real step back towards MotoGP 20, 19, that sort of physics. The brakes just do not feel good at all. They don't want to stop even with a lot of power. So I guess that's a bit awkward. Uh, oh, Peko really slow there in the exit of that corner as well. Didn't even have the ride I in engaged. But look how hard we're stamping on the brakes here just to stop the bike. I don't mind that because you should go pretty hard on the brakes. But what I have an issue with is how much force you can press on the brakes without consequence. MotoGP21 for me captured it best. If you absolutely slam on the brakes, you're going to crash. It's simple. But here, it seems that you can really slam on the brakes and there's not really any sort of consequence for it. I'm such a sensitive rider when it comes to the brakes. And this might not affect you, but it affects me massively. And that is, I need to be gentle on the brakes. You've seen how much brake I was applying there for the, for the Portimao corner. Really, really soft amount. I don't go hard on the brakes. It's not my style in that way. I like to be really, really gentle on the brakes, but up to the last second. Not really suiting my playstyle. Who knows, maybe I'll have to adapt. But so far, it doesn't feel as good. I do think it's taken a step further back than what it was already in MotoGP 22. Now, I still love MotoGP 22 no matter what, but I'm not really too particularly fond of this. It is different now compared to playing as Aprilia with the Lacia Spargo. I felt that bike was just absolutely awful. But this Yamaha is pretty friendly, to be honest with you, but it just, just doesn't feel good on the brakes. That's the biggest thing I can take it. It feels like you're on a rail now. Uh, even on the right-hand side, when I'm trying to accelerate to really slide the tyre, it doesn't seem to want to move. I'm not, not sure. Uh, I'm just trying my best now to try and replicate every possible way I could brake and get a good feeling of it, and I can't seem to get a good feeling at all. The brake really early here for the Primera corner, using a lot of rear brake, just positively slamming on the brakes there to stop this bike and it's still not really getting anywhere I'm not sure really not sure on this one I ask for you guys to let me know what your experiences are because I really don't know about this one as uh, Peko Bagnaia launched up on the inside good to see no one's crashed so far into the uh, Samsung corner that's a good sign of course my career mode race here was just abysmal way too many riders crashing but we will discuss the rest of the patch notes. We have discussed a few things so far, but let's discuss the rest right now. There is uh, an online race celebration sort of uh, cutscene now. So if you're a victor online, you will have a little cutscene to celebrate afterwards. Not bad, I guess. Uh, I don't play online, so I won't really be taking that feature really that well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. Although when I start streaming online with you guys, maybe then I'll uh, pay attention to that particular cutscene. And we have a... Oh, I should not be reading the... <laughs> I should wait for the straight to read, really. But the circuit of, uh, banners have been updated, so all the tracks have now got updated banners and things like that. 
But some of the dimension as well, I've noticed that AI is actually improved now. The AI are actually going pretty qu Oh, forget it. Forget it. How slow did Peko go in for turn one then? And that understeer thing is still there. The weird sort of um, feeling that you get when you can't turn in or move, where the game sort of just takes over the controls for a second for you, if that makes sense. It happens in turn four in Qatar, happens here in turn one, and in the Tor VIP corner, which is the next corner coming up now. It does still do that, where you lose control and you just can't turn. But it's maybe not as bad, or maybe I just did better on the brakes that time. Uh, they increase the number of different characters in the 3D environment spaces, so therefore, in the intro of the sort of races that we had just a moment ago, I may have edited that out, that has had more riders in it and more people in it, so there's just more spectators. Uh, we knew about the face scans getting updated, so the 3D environments and such as that were a lot better, but um, a few other minor things as well. Apparently minor fixes are there, but I don't know what the minor fixes were. And a few content creator graphics have been updated as well, which is always nice to see. Maybe one day I'll get uh, the Dot Race logo in there, but for now, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> but into turn 13, I will say, this doesn't feel as good as what I remembered. I was actually pretty confident and pretty good here when racing in my very first Grand Prix, but right now I don't feel confident and I don't feel happy with this update right now. But guys, that is my opinion, and I will leave you to yours. Hopefully this game is fine for you, hopefully there's no issues with the update, and it's just me, and I'll just adapt to it whenever it comes. But for now, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope this video has helped, and I hope it's been informative. If it has, let me know in the comment section down below, or even hit the like button and consider subscribing as well. But guys, thanks for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.